He simply said, beware of your unbelief. Beware of not believing the promises of God. Hallelujah. You know what I'm going to talk to us about already here if the Lord would help me. It's that one word I'd like to concentrate on. Beware. Beware. It was Wednesday, April the 10th, 1912. Uh, the largest ship in the world at that time was setting sail. It was called the Titanic. Uh, they launched forth with all kinds of pomp and circumstance and fanfare. And it was uh, uh, noised abroad uh, around, uh, you know, the, the known world, the, the English-speaking world, especially about the, the grandeur and the strength and the might, amen, of this great ship called Titanic. Amen. It looked like everything was going good until Sunday morning, April the 14th, 1912. That's when a wireless communication came from a ship steamer uh, called the Coronia that, uh, uh, that told of icebergs in the shipping lane that the Titanic had been mapped out uh, to take. But when I read the story, it seems as if this first message was forgotten. And just after lunch on Sunday, April the 14th, another ship called the Californian called to the Titanic and they gave a very specific warning. Amen. Three icebergs have been spotted in your shipping lane. Not too long after that, another message came from a ship called the Baltic. Uh, very specifically stating there are icebergs in the shipping lane. Uh, beware, there's danger just up ahead. Hallelujah. No one on Titanic seemed to be concerned about these bewares. And that's when it happened. At 11.40 p.m. that Sunday night on April the 14th, a lookout that was up on the uh, bridge, he saw through his glasses, he saw the tips of those icebergs sticking out of the water, and he shouted over the intercom down to the engine room, Icebergs! Amen. When the captain heard the warning, this time he signaled to the engine room, Stop the engines! Amen. They them engines come uh, to a grinding halt uh, and then the captain sent the signal uh, reverse the engines uh, but it was too late praise God uh, at a speed of 20 knots at about 23 miles an hour uh, the Titanic struck these icebergs uh, whose jagged edges underwater uh, amen pierced the starboard side uh, of that, that, that Titanic uh, you know what one man said uh, the man that was over the company that built this ship he said not even God himself could sink the Titanic come on say amen it was built as the unsinkable ship amen but because they refused to heed the warnings because amen they stopped their ears to the bewares the ship went under it's sinking fast and uh, 12 30 a.m. Uh, they came a call over the intercom. Hey, man, all souls on the top deck and bring your life belts with you. In that day, they, they, they didn't have life vests like we know them. They had belts, they had, uh, big belts that would float. Hey, man, bring all, all souls on the top deck and bring your life belts with you. I read that by 2.20 a.m., now listen, they gave the call, amen, everybody up, everybody to the top deck at 12.30. By 2.20 a.m., about two hours later, amen, they saw that there was no hope, amen, Titanic is going under, and there's no stopping it. People are feeling lifeboats, amen, trying to make their escape, and there was a band, amen, that struck up a song, those men with those instruments, you know what they got to play in there? They got to playing nearer my God to thee. Come on, say amen. But it's too late now. Amen. Nearer my God to thee. But you didn't heed the warning. You didn't beware. Come on now. Ain't that just the way it is? When all hope is gone and the ship is going under, now they're crying out to God. All they had to do was pay attention. All they had to do was give heed to the warning. 
And I thought about all these warnings, all these bewares that came from so many different ships, so many different places. Amen. But they were all ignored. I said, oh, what a terrible tragedy that is. Hallelujah. Amen. But can I preach to you this morning about a greater tragedy still? Amen. How about those that are in this building that have heard the bewares of God? How about souls in this building this morning whose grandma and grandpa is already in heaven that shouted around these altars whose mom and daddy raised them in the house of God? Man, I feel the Holy Ghost here, and you've sat here Sunday after Sunday, camp meeting after camp meeting, and still preacher after preacher has stood behind this Bible stand and shouted, beware, 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 and you're still sinking, you're still going under, you're still not paying attention to the love of God. I saw the first beware in Deuteronomy 6 and 12. Hey man, he's speaking to Israel. Of course, he said, Beware, lest thou forget the Lord. I'm living in a society in America where people live as if they don't need God. Hey Amen. My generation, my society seem like they're doing everything they can to forget about God. Hey Amen. America has forgotten her dependence on God, her need for God, and her obligations to God. Did you know that the forgetfulness of God is the cause of all the wickedness, all the sinfulness, all the corruption all around us. It's because men have forgotten God. What profit is it in for us to pray? Why should we serve the Almighty? Hey, brother and sister, that sounds like my generation. That sounds like my generation. Amen. Why should we go to church? Why should we read the Bible? Why should we come out of the world? Why should we pray and talk to God? I'm trying to preach to you. Don't forget God. Don't forget God. On June the 17th, 1963, by the Supreme Court of the United States of America, the highest court in all the land, passed a ruling. Amen. And they ruled the Bible and prayer out of the public school. No doubt this was uh, influenced by a woman named Mrs. Madeline Murray. You might remember her, know her better as Madeline Murray O'Hare. Hey, Amen. She was the leader of a group of atheists, a group of infidels that hated God and despised the Bible. Uh, listen to what Miss Madeline Murray had to say. Hey, Amen. Just before this uh, ruling was passed, uh, she said, We find the Bible to be nauseating, uh, historically inaccurate, uh, replete with the ravings of madmen. Uh, we find God to be sadistic, uh, brutal, uh, and a representation of hatred and vengeance. Uh, we find the Lord's prayer muttered by worms, uh, groveling for a meager existence uh, in a traumatic, uh, paranoid world. Uh, did you hear what the atheist said? Uh, she said, there's nothing to that Bible. There's nothing to that God. There's nothing to them Christians. There's nothing to that Lord's Prayer. Let's just forget about Him. Huh. See, they took the Bible out. They took God out. Come on here, say amen to me. And the devil filled the void. Come on here, he put dope and guns. Come on, say amen. We can't afford to forget God. Daniel Webster said on the floor of Congress, he said to his generation, the Bible is our only safe guide. So long as we take it as our instructor for conduct and character, we will go on prospering in the future as in the past. But the moment we relegate it from our lives, a catastrophe will come to such as we have not known before. Come on now. We're in that hour, brother and sister. Calamity. Catastrophe. An hour like we've never seen before. And it's because we've forgotten God. That right? Praise God. Amen. How I'd like to talk to us. The Lord would help me. 
I read about that great revolutionist, Patrick Henry. He said a lot of good things. We read about him in school. He's the man you'll remember. He said, give me liberty or give me death. That's not the only thing Patrick Henry said. You might not have knew it. They didn't teach me this at the public school. In my private time, I've learned this. A reading through history books. Patrick Henry was a Christian. Amen. He was a child of God. You know what Patrick Henry said? He said, it is impossible that a nation of infidels or idolaters would be a nation of free men. It is when a people forget God that tyrants forge their chains. Come on, say amen. Amen. You know what he said? God and his word is the only thing of keeping us free. God and his word is the only thing we can depend on. Come on now. Praise God. Amen. The Bible said, Beware. Lest thou forget the Lord. Why should we beware? The psalmist said in Psalms 9 and 17, The wicked shall be turned into hell. And every nation that forgets God. In Psalm 50 and 22, Now consider this. He that forget God, Lest I tear you in pieces. And there be none to deliver. Why should we remember God? The penalty's too high to forget him. The price tag's too high. It costs too much when we forget God. Oh, lift your hands and love on the Lord here. Oh, listen. Hey, man, I've been talking about this nation, but how about you? How about your home? How about your soul? Have you pushed God out of your mind? Have you pushed him out of your life? Have you forgotten God? Huh? One of these days he's going to tear you to pieces. Ain't that what the Bible said? He's going to tear you in pieces. Come on now. You may be doing good right now, flying real high, making more money than you've ever made, driving big trucks, living in fancy houses. Come on here. But at the while, at the while, you're going to wake up and realize, I need God. I need mercy. I need the love of God. You better reach up and reach out and get a hold of him now while there's still hope. I saw it. I saw it in the Bible. The Bible said in the book of Romans, uh, chapter 1, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were they thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like unto corruptible man and the birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up unto uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Amen. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves the reckoning of the air which is meat and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient hey, but did you hear how many times God gave them up God gave them up God gave them up God turned them over I don't want to get past feeling hey, man, I don't want him to quit me I don't want him to give me up but I want to retain him in my Beware Lest you forget God Beware Beware I'd like to remember him wouldn't you Amen But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God That's what Moses said in Deuteronomy 8 
and 18, praise God. The writer of Ecclesiastes said in Ecclesiastes 12 and 1, Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. You remember what Jesus said? I, I don't know if it's on the front of that communion table or not. Hey, man, he was talking about the, the, the Lord's Supper. You know what he said? This do in remembrance of me. Fill your mind full of the knowledge of God. Keep God in the forefront of your daily living. Don't forget God. Don't forget the blood. Don't forget the word. Don't forget worship. Hey. 